If you were trying to figure out what group you're in, group A or B, you need to look at your student's name tag that has group A or group B on it. And families, you are in the same group as your student. You're following the same schedule as your student. An important note for um, those of you who, if a couple of you don't have a group or room number assigned to you, you need to see Corinne over here on the very end at the end of this keynote, and she will give you a heads up on where you belong. So find Corinne if you, for some reason, don't have an assigned location for today. Students, the room number on your name tag is where you will be doing academic advising. Once we're done here in this session, pretty much everything happens over in the Martha Miller Center, and we will have people guiding you there. So that will be easy. A couple of other things. We have a punch card. So if you visit enough offices in our resource room, you will take that to the second floor of the Martha Miller Rotunda and get a free $5 gift card to the bookstore that you can spend today only, but you've got to visit enough offices and talk to enough people to get that. So that is a part of the resource room, and um, we also want to encourage you again to fill out your pre-survey now and turn it in after the event. There will be boxes out here, and then fill out your post-survey after. Um, restrooms, if you need them, are right out these double doors. And the bookstore, when you want to spend that massive $5 gift card that we're giving you if you visit enough offices. It is in the DeWitt Center, which is that brick building right over there. It's connected to this building. It's on the lower level. Um, that's where the bookstore is for those of you who are not familiar with it. Um, a couple of introductions. This is the good part, and I'll stop talking now. Um, first, I would love to just say a public thank you to your admissions representatives who got you all here today. So can we thank admissions? When those of us who aren't in admissions see what they do for you and the relationships that they have built with all of you and the text messages and the emails and the notes, um, we are amazed and they are a model for us on how to do our work once you actually get to campus and we will do our best um, and pledge to you to have the same personal approach that they've had with you for the past um, year, two years, three years, however long it is. Um, we also have two other individuals, are Mimi and Alicia out there? They are not out there. They are doing check-in. Oh, here they are. So these two over here, Mimi and Alicia, they are your orientation directors for August and September. So Mimi and Alicia, you will be getting tons of communication from them over the summer about the big orientation program that happens in August. And they're amazing people, and we love them, and they work with us in our office all year long. So just wanted you to be introduced to them. And last but not least, so these three students... These three students work full-time for us. One of the hallmarks of a Hope College education is the type of opportunities you get outside of the classroom as well as in the classroom. So these three students aren't event planners like doing the things that um, we tell them to do. They're like thinking through these events, working independently, making these things happen, and getting, um, I think, some really real-world experience doing this kind of stuff. So, they have made every single thing about today happen, from getting faculty members here, to getting you here, to planning how to make this transition to the academic experience at Hope a good and easy one. And um, these three are three of the best at Hope, and my hope is that some of you sitting in the crowd today will be doing exactly what they're doing right now, or what Mimi and Alicia are doing over the summer. These are the kinds of things you get at Hope College, and um, they make me really proud to um, work with them. So don't give me or anyone else the credit today when the event goes well. Give them the credit because they've, they've the ones who've actually made it happen. So I'll let them introduce themselves and we will carry on. Thank you, Chris. Um, hello, my name is Julie Gareca. I'm a senior and I study political science here at Hope. Um, we are so happy all of you are able to come today. It's so nice to see um, all of these faces to the names we've been seeing for the past few weeks and um, we've just been prepping for this event to make it so informative and so helpful for all of you in order to ease some anxiety that you guys may have as incoming students. Um, we know that it, you guys are nervous and we're nervous too, um, but we just hope to just help you guys and feel free to come ask us any questions. We'd be happy to talk to all of you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Heaven Silas. I am a junior here, and I am also a comm major. 
Um, so we're going to have everyone stand up if you are able so that we can play a quick game and get everyone on their feet. Uh, we're going to play a game and it's going to see who drove the furthest to get here today. And whoever came from the furthest, you are going to receive a prize. All right, so does everyone understand the rules? We good? Okay. So if you traveled or if you drove 30 minutes or less to get to Hope today, please take a seat. Okay? If you drove two hours or less to get to Hope today, please take a seat. If you drove three hours or less to get to Hope, please take a seat. Four hours or less? Five hours or less? Six hours? Okay, so the three six-hour people, please stand up. Was it another six-hour? You guys want to stand up? Okay, so can you tell me where you guys came from? Okay, awesome. What about you? Okay. Okay, great. Well, thank you guys for coming. We have some blankets for you today for coming so far to get here. We really appreciate all of you guys. Thank you for participating. Awesome. All right, my name is Corinne Quackenbush, and I'm also a senior studying social work and minoring in Spanish. I'm from Zionsville, Indiana, which is a suburb of Indianapolis, and I have the awesome opportunity of introducing our president of Hope College. President Voskel is one of our favorite people on campus. He loves to talk to students and families and anybody that he comes across. He's super warm and friendly. One of my favorite things about President Voskel is that he has this bike that has, that he rides around campus and that has Prez on the back and I think it's really special. So please welcome President Voskel. Well, actually, it's uh, painted orange and blue. You can't miss it, and it's been stolen a couple times, but returned in good shape. This campus has gotten bigger over the years, and I can save a lot of time uh, jumping on that bike and going across campus. And uh, you probably will get some bikes, too, some of you. Well, welcome. What a delight it is to uh, welcome you as, for the first time, I can say, members of the class of 2022 or Hope College, and uh, I hope it fits well, and you, have en you will enjoy your experience and gain as much learning and uh, life experience as well as uh, my siblings did and my uh, children did when they came to Hope College. I have to confess that I did not go to Wisconsin. Uh, I went to Wisconsin, University of Wisconsin in Madison, rather than Hope being the outlier in my own family. But uh, <clears throat> I love Hope College and taught here 17 years uh, and it was an absolute delight to teach here. I love it and uh, still doing some of this. So uh, it's great to have you all here. Um, I, I, I know that this is, a, you're kind of the early birds that get the worm. You are people who want to know about what's going to happen, get there and get ready and ease some of the anxiety. And uh, I suspect that we followed you through your four years or so. Um, uh, we learned that you kept being the early birds. So, uh, I'm looking at a pretty uh, uh, outstanding group uh, in front of me today. Um, Betty and I hope that uh, during this year, we are here one more year, we will be your freshman president. I'm an interim president, and uh, the search process is going to go on this year, so uh, we are here another year. We had a, tr a wonderful year last year. Love the students, the faculty, and the staff, and having been around here and knowing the school, it eased the transition for me. So uh, I'm looking forward to having you at our house. Betty and I uh, hosted a lot of people last year. We try to host as many freshmen as we can so they can get in the big house. And the big house is simply right down on the, uh, uh, right down across the uh, pine grove there, I guess you'd call it. And, and uh, uh, the front door is on the other side on 10th Street. Ring the bell if you want to see us. We uh, love to have students stop by. We will invite you there for various occasions, and we hope by the end of the year, we will get to know most of you at least. We'll try to get to know you personally. That's important to us, and it's one of the reasons that we uh, felt called to come here and do this uh, particular uh, job uh, as interim president. I do want to say that uh, I know that this is your first academic experience at Hope College, 
And uh, I hope it's a good one today. I hope you learn the things you want to learn. You get to jump on those things you want to get to jump on. And you meet some people that will uh, help you and assist you in this. We don't like to control people, but we do like to provide options and opportunities. So uh, Hope College is a unique, a distinctive Christian liberal arts college, or a liberal arts college that adheres to the historic Christian faith. And uh, it's an open college when it comes to these things, too. We, uh, uh, we don't put demands on our students in terms of what they believe, but we provide an opportunity for them to worship in the chapel or uh, outside the chapel in other ways. So uh, there's that dimension. And there are lots of choices around that that you'll have. You can talk to the students that have been at Hope. Uh, there are also choices in terms of academic majors and minors, endless choices. And you'll have a chance to taste certain things before you have to choose your mi a minor or major. And that's a good thing. It's good to have choices. Uh, and I also want you to know, just say one thing. I know they want me to wrap this up. I want to say one thing that you should take advantage of. You have faculty here, as well as staff, and you're finding that out already. You have faculty here that will care about you as individuals, not just as pictures in a book or numbers in a classroom or someone sitting in a particular chair. You have opportunities to develop relationships with these faculty members. Relationships, in many cases, which will last the rest of your life or their lives. And uh, take advantage of that. Uh, when I taught here for 17 years, I had every student at the house for uh, an evening gathering. And we had refreshments, we played some games, and we kidded each other. We actually had a session uh, of learning that time, too. Every student for 17 years. You have other faculty are, that are like that. They are eager to get to know you, and uh, I'm not going to force things on you, but, but I want you to take advantage of the fact that the faculty are accessible and they care about students. Teaching is, is so important here. We uh, hire professors who are already try to be outstanding teachers. We want scholars. We want everything. We want scholars, and we want research folks, and so forth. Take advantage of that. A couple of things just to know as well. Hope, as you know, I think most of you know, is an outstanding collaborative research institution. One of the top five in the nation year after year, all schools included, in terms of the number of students percentage-wise who are engaged in research, in most cases with faculty members. Take advantage of that. If you're going to grad school or if you're going on to a profession, all of this is, is helpful and will assist you. We have some students that go to grad school that say that their research opportunities at Hope prepared them and made them much, much more uh, able to do research and lead the other students in those grad, school, uh, grad schools. Take advantage of that. We also are starting a new program this year, which you're going to hear about, uh, the Borger Center for Calling and Career, realizing that we need to have students think about what they prefer to do or what are called to do, what their interests are, and start that as freshmen, continue it all the way through their senior year. And that uh, brings out uh, opportunities for testing careers during your time at Hope as well. That's starting this year. You are the first class to be engaged in the Borgter Center for Calling and Career. You'll hear more about that than you probably want to. So anyway, I just want to say, uh, please uh, take an opportunity to, to greet me when you have a chance and um, stop over, and I hope that we will be able to invite a number of you over for various occasions at the, the big house, as my grandchildren call it. And watch for the orange and blue bike. Uh, I try not to hit people, but sometimes you never know. Watch out. So <laughs> welcome to Hope College. It's great to see all of you. Thank you. Dare I say welcome again? So many welcomes, so many greetings. It's because we're so glad you're here. Uh, my name is Ryan White. I am the Director of Academic Advising and First Year Seminars. Um, as Chris noted, I'm the Tuesday Tidings guy. And I just wanted you to know, students, that I have a little program on there that lets me know who's opened the message. <laughs> so I know. I know. No, no, no. It's true, though. Um, <laughs> I'm joined today by many great colleagues. We've recognized so many of them, um, our student leaders, uh, our admissions representatives. Um, 
are there any registrar or academic advising folks here? I see you, Jared. So uh, you've, been, you've been in Abby. So Jared and Abby, can you wave? When you call the registrar's office or academic advising office with some of your early questions, you, we've already received quite a few. Um, those are some student leaders that are also working with you uh, throughout the summer. Some of you have already uh, spoken with them. Uh, is Alyssa here or is she gone? Alyssa Boss? Okay. Great. Well, here's the outline for the, for the rest of our, our, our main session um, uh, together right now. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about academic majors and some kind of surprise and misinformation surrounding academic majors. And then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, our curriculum at HOPE um, and also set the stage for the rest of the day for that advising time that you're going to have with a faculty or staff advisor. I want to start, though, by just recognizing uh, parents having recently sent a child off to school. Um, I, can, I understand a little bit of, of, of what you're feeling. Um, and uh, my son James let me snap a photo of him. Um, that moment he was like going in. I may not feel the ex exact same as you, but um, <laughs> a little, right? I can, it's the best I can do uh, right now. It was still emotional. Um, so I want to spend a little bit of time uh, because when we start to talk about classes and registration, um, there's, a, there's, a, there's some kind of misidea, misinformation uh, that everybody feels like they need to know everything before they do that. Like, I'm only going to register for chemistry if I know I'm going to be a dentist. And I need to know that right now before I walk over to Martha Miller and talk to anyone, right? So there's this kind of this, this, this pressure, and, and we're going to address that a little bit. Um, but before I do anything else, I kind of want to address a little bit more of that pressure. I want to recognize students, some of the questions that I know people like me have been asking you, your teachers, your family, you ask each other, right? Where are you going to college? What are you going to major in? Where are you going to go to college? What are you going to major in? Christopher. What are you going to major in? Kara, what are you going to major in? Right, you get these questions. Oh, and then you start to get advice. What, you know what, Kara, Christopher, business degree, good practical option. Get a but you can get a job with one of those, right? <laughs> job, you can get a job. You might get other advice like, oh, Christopher, but you got to do what you love. Because if you're not doing what you love, then what are you really doing? Right? And then we find out Christopher and Kara, oh geez, they're, they're into art, you guys. Um, <laughs> all right, hang on. What are you really going to do with that art degree? For real. Kara, let's talk about this. We're going to keep talking about this. And then some of you have kind of family hopes, expectations to be the first lawyer, the first doctor, or maybe the next lawyer, the next doctor take over the family practice. So you get all these questions, right? And people ask you because they care. They want you to thrive and flourish and be successful. So the questions are asked with a, a good intent, and I ask them too. Have you had any of these questions? Whitney? Yes? Yeah? Um, I, so I just want to recognize them. That's about it. And just say, just so you know, lots of folks get asked these questions. And just so you know, lots of folks feel anxiety after being asked these questions. And as Chris Bull noted earlier, it can also help lead to this idea that, like, I think my peers might have it a little more figured out than I do. Whitney's thinking, I think Christopher over there, he probably already knows what he's doing. Kara, she definitely has it put together. I don't know what I'm, so a lot of folks kind of feel like that, and so we just kind of want to recognize that so you know. Maybe you don't feel like that. Uh, maybe you kind of have a plan and feel good about it, and that's great too. Um, so we're going to shift gears, and it's fun. I want to take a little bit of, I want to take a little look at some really, really successful people, talk about what they majored in, uh, and I think we'll be in for a few surprises, maybe a few things that aren't so surprising. Um, but it's a, it's a kind of a fun investigation. So, uh, it's quiz time. James Cameron. Uh, maybe you've heard of James Cameron or some of these films. A Avatar, Terminator, Titanic, Sanctum. Um, what do you think he majored in? What do you think? Physics. Kate, Kate thinks physics. 
Um, Kate, I wish I had another prize to give you. We're, we're out of blankets, but it is physics. Well done, well done. Um, James Cameron's biographer uh, talks about um, a little bit of his journey, how he was more into uh, the special effects before directing, uh, and his biographer calls him part scientist, part filmmaker, uh, because that, that physics that physics helped drive him. Chad Hurley, co-founder, CEO of YouTube. Stephanie, have you heard of YouTube? It's a video sharing platform on the internet. Yes, yeah, Stephanie has heard of YouTube. Chad Hurley started it, ran it, and then sold it to Google for like $2 billion. And I heard his mom is proud, <laughs> right? What, what do you, any guesses on what he majored in? Uh, computer science. Computer science, such a good guess. Any other guesses? French, math, we're running through all of them. That's perfect, that's the way to do it. Uh, he was a fine arts major. But you know what, Kara, maybe, that, maybe that, art, that art degree might not be so bad. We'll have to rethink this, okay? So that might, that might work out. You know what, um, YouTube is not the most complicated platform. It's massive, of course. Right, but it's a big idea about how we share things with one another. It's a pretty creative idea, uh, if you think about it. All right, this next one uh, is for the parents. Students, you don't know who this is. Um, but this is a real person, right? Parents, some of you know who this is. So, for students, for real, this is a real person. Her name is Connie Chung. She is one of the most successful network news anchors of the 1980s and 1990s, uh, a real pioneer. Um, a female national presence uh, with news. What do you think she majored in? Yeah, nobody trusts me now. Um, she was a journalism major. Um, some people, some people have an idea early on and they study it and they do it and life is good uh, for them and it's a good linear path and that's somewhat her story. Um, and that will be the story of some of you here. Um, about three to seven percent of you uh, will probably have that <laughs> kind of a, a story. All right, I have a few more. Steve Martin, this is another one, maybe a little more for the parents. Uh, comedian, actor, really successful entertainer. I heard, I heard a couple philosophies over here. Well done. Well done, yes, he was a philosophy major. I'm gonna tell you some things Steve Martin said about his coursework. He studied philosophy, he also liked psychology, and he said this in a quote when talking about his education. College changed what I believe and what I think about everything. I had read a, a treatise on comedy explaining that a laugh was formed when the storyteller created tension, then with the punchline released it. I didn't quite get this concept. What if there were no punchlines? What if I created tension and never released it? And if you know Steve Martin, he's kind of like awkward and does a lot of physical humor, and he does that. He like sets up a scenario and then just kind of hanging there and then there's awkward laughter. What if the audience, uh, what would the audience do with all that tension? Theoretically, it would have to come out sometime, but if I kept denying them the formality of a punchline, the audience would eventually pick their own place to laugh, essentially out of desperation. <laughs> um, his early reviews began to come in. Uh, in on stand-up, one of his reviewers said this, this so-called comedian should be told jokes are supposed to have punchlines. I don't think he will be successful. <laughs> right? Uh, it paid off in the end for Steve Martin to follow his intellectual curiosity and to lean into it and, and rather than away from it. J.K. Rowling, Harry Potter author, well known, very successful, gives some credit to her study for helping her create the world of Harry Potter double major, you can hardly go wrong. What do you think? Classics. classics. Who said classics? Why do you think classics? Uh, there's a lot of Latin. I like oh Latin. my gosh. Kate, so good. So if you probably couldn't hear it in the back. Kate said classics and then and guessed. <laughs> and she guessed because there's a lot of Latin. Yes, there is a lot of Latin in Harry Potter. There's a lot of mixed up Latin where she'll take a Latin word or Latin root and kind of like mix it up. Um, and she was a classics and French major. Yeah, if you would have said English, I would have given you half the credit for French because of the, this, the idea of studying like language and, and literature. All right, we've got two more we're gonna look at. Um, this is kind of a similar follow-up on a classics major. This is, a, this is from a real letter from a father to a son. I will, 
I will name the son in a second. He reads, I'm appalled, even horrified, that you have adopted classics as a major. As a matter of fact, I almost puked on the way home today. I'm a practical man, and for the life of me, I cannot possibly understand why you would wish to speak Greek. <laughs> Classics, study of ancient culture and languages, Greek and Latin uh, are, are a part of that. This is a letter from Ted Turner, or a letter from uh, Ted Turner's uh, father to, uh, we'll make sure it was Ted Turner Sr., maybe it was, I don't remember his father's name, but. So this is the founder of a bunch of uh, television networks, right? He ended up being really successful as well. Last person that I'm going to share, and then, I'll, then I'll, we'll move on. Thurgood Marshall, lawyer, first African American on the Supreme Court. Students, many of you know this figure, even if you're not remembering, um, was the lawyer arguing in the Brown versus Board of Education case to desegregate schools in the South. Uh, like some, perhaps some of the parents here, he kind of started in one thing and then did a different thing. Those are both represented up here. Any ideas? Her dentist, if I wait long enough, I get to hear all of them. Yeah. yeah, he started in dentistry and then went to law. So we, we, we show these folks because they're kind of fun, um, and it helps me get a laugh, and I find them kind of interesting. Uh, but really, I, wanna, I want to highlight some kind of myths, misinformation, or just partial, partial information um, that these can help kind of illuminate highlight and update. So I'm going to go through three what we call major myths, things that people have kind of misidentified as part of, of picking a major. Major myth number one, this idea that most people know their major and career goals when they enter college. Um, we feel like that's true, but it's just not true. Um, the reality is a majority, a small majority, about 60% of students come in without any intended course of study. Uh, about 60% of students um, will also change their major. Um, and some students will end up designing a major. Uh, so I'm not saying these are good or bad. Uh, my point is simply that the idea that most students coming in uh, have a major in mind and will graduate with that major, it's just not true. It, that's not uh, how the, the data bears out. Major myth number two, um, I'll only have one career in my lifetime. This is similar to that, that note I mentioned earlier about, like, I need to know now if I'm going to be a dentist. It's, it's kind of this, there's going to be this thing I do in life. I have to know what it is. I need to have that linear Connie Chung kind of timeline, outline, life path to get there. Um, th but the truth is the folks in this generation are going to do many, many different jobs. Um, the, the life cycle of a job is, is just a, a few years in most cases. And also, some of you in this room, maybe you, Kate, could be Christopher, could be Kara, could be any of you, could be some of the parents. Some of you are going to do a job before you, graduate, or before you retire that doesn't exist yet, right? Now, I know it's a little silly in some ways to be talking about that. You haven't even quite got to college yet. but. Um, but that's kind of interesting. What do you do with that information? Uh, we don't even know what that job is. Nobody can recommend it. Nobody can recommend you major in it because we don't know what that job is yet. Although maybe you do. Maybe you're going to be the one who, who develops it. We'll come back to how, how to go through an education with that kind of information in mind in just a minute. Last major myth, um, this concern that liberal arts uh, colleges or graduates in some of those programs are unemployable, or if you pick the wrong major, you'll, you'll just mortgage your future. You only have one opportunity or limited opportunities of things that you, that you want to do. That's not true. Uh, the truth is, when you're at a liberal arts college like Hope, um, you're going to gain a variety of uh, what we call transferable skills. Uh, re reading, writing, research, critical thinking, evidence-based decision-making, communication skills. And if you look at most, uh, most graduates in most academic departments, right? So in how many, how many academic disciplines did you do in high school? Maybe 10, maybe 15, right? We have 50 different majors. Have you looked at them? Do you know what they are? If you don't know what they are, then how do you know which one is the one you should pick? Right? So 
there's the, part of this is just kind of getting a little more information and exposure, but when you look at all those different majors and you look at what our students are employed in who graduate in those majors, and we can tell you that information, you will see that in most majors, people are employed in a real wide variety of areas. Now, there's themes, of course. Um, a lot of our psychology majors are in helping area professions, but they don't all go on to be uh, therapists, for example. And in fact, if you want to know, okay, well, that sounds good, but how do I know that information? Well, we make it pretty readily available. Um, part of our new Borkter Center for Calling and Career, we have these web pages. We have one site that's called, What Can I Do With a Major In? So you can actually answer that question. It's a great question. What do I do with a major in psychology or classics or art or history or French or business? You don't get a job at the business store with the business degree. There's no the business store, right? Business gives you a set of skills, like psychology does. But you can go onto this website, you can select a major, um, and, and, we'll show, and we'll give you a variety of information um, that's on there. This is, this is a list, this is one of the, this is not the web, web page, I just kind of copied and pasted this information, but these are, um, these are specific jobs that HOPE graduates from the psychology department are doing right now. So you can an get that question answered, what are HOPE grads doing in s with certain degrees? You can answer that question pretty quickly and it's kind of fun to take a look. So for example, the Director of Research and Integration at the American Association of Retired Persons is a HOPE College psych grad and, and so on. So I show you all that major myth information partly just to make this point, that major doesn't always equal job. It's, it's related. Um, but you don't, it doesn't, it's not always the exact same thing, and you don't need to know that job first. And let's take, um, not just my word, but let's ask some employers. I'm going to show you some employer feedback. This is a survey. Um, this is what employers, this is the National Survey on College Work Readiness. Uh, this survey is basically Colleges asking employers, what do you want more of in college graduates? And this is what the employers tell us. They, um, their highest responses are uh, effective oral written communication skills, critical thinking, being able to apply knowledge to real world settings, complex problem solving, ethical decision, decision making, teamwork, creativity, and then concepts in science and technology. So, and there's other things. These are all the high things. So the things at the bottom aren't low. There's, there's other skills and things that are not represented on this, on this graph. Um, most of those are the transferable skills that we're working on in a liberal arts education. And if you look at our graduating classes, here's some recent data. We survey our, um, our graduates six months after graduation, uh, and, and most of them are employed or in graduate school. Uh, and um, so it seems to be working. Um, we don't have a lot of people staying in the basement, uh, parents. We don't have a lot, of, a lot of basement dwellers where people are moving on. And um, when we ask those graduates, what are the things that helped contribute to their next step, to that, that placement that they're in? Um, some of the top factors, can you guess any of them? The, the, the thing that comes up number one sometimes is communication skills. So now we have... Um, we have employers and graduates telling us one of the most important things for their next step in their professional lives are their communication skills. It almost sounds kind of boring and anticlimactic, like, oh, yeah, but wow, it's, it's that important. Uh, and you will spend time working on and developing those types of skills while you're at Hope. Um, so what does all this major stuff mean for uh, a Hope education? Well, not only do we invest in helping you discern a, a good major and help you begin to discern a good professional path, we, we also like to talk about um, some other things in addition and related to those things uh, while you're at Hope. So you'll hear this language, we've, we've mentioned it a few times already with our, our new center. You hear this language about calling or vocation and here's a kind of a famous quote, some faculty on campus use it, that calling, calling or vocation is uh, it's the place God calls you is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. And so when you're at Hope, we will also help you think about what, what do you love doing? What are your strengths? What are you good at? What are you interested in? 
what is needed in the world? How do you take those things and make connections to areas of study, areas of work, areas of service that make a difference for your life and your community? So we'll talk about majors, we'll talk about careers, but we'll also talk about how those are a part of a bigger sense of purpose and calling in your life. And we also just don't want you to feel like this guy, right? Lots of folks, when they're getting that question I started with, what are you going to major in? What are you going to major in? What are you going to major in? Business! Stop asking me. Or pre-health, leave me alone, right? And you, you'll, you, some people just kind of declare something, um, and then they, they start in it. And that's actually fine. I think that's, have an idea, test it out. That's great. That's a totally fine approach. Um, but you have to reflect on your experience when you do that thing so that you don't end up feeling like, why did I keep doing and studying? That's not me at all. I wanted to, I was really interested in the other. Um, so we will spend time with you when you're meeting with your advisor, when you're meeting with Borichter Center people, when you're talking with faculty members to help you pause and think about how your experiences can influence your decisions and your next steps. Our kind of quick advice that just on how to, a framework on how to think about picking a major. Again, we'll, we'll have you kind of start with your personal awareness, your strengths and interests and values. We'll help you think through those, right? We're asking you this summer to take a strengths quest inventory by July 20 something. Um, and and we'll, we'll invest some time with you in thinking about those. Your educational awareness, do you know what those major opportunities are? Which fields of study connect with those strengths that will help you think through? And professional awareness, what are, what are some good matches or some good early opportunities to check out? So that's kind of how we'll walk you through that process. So that's kind of like the first, the first bit that I wanted to share with you, uh, was just thinking through majors, letting you know some of the uh, kind of accurate information about what you really can get out of a liberal arts education. Uh, I'm going to shift gears now and talk about um, our curriculum, which is one of the ways by which we help you develop some of those transferable skills and knowledge, um, as well as just talk about the rest of the day, how the registration process is going to work, and just kind of set the stage for what you can expect moving forward with that stuff. Um, the timeline, this is in your materials, it's on our website, I email it to you each week, um, but just so this is just a reminder of kind of the, the registration timeline for the first uh, semester. Uh, the, the registration worksheet, which I'll talk more about in just a minute, is due June 26. Um, the course schedule that we build for you will be available at the end of July. So that's, that's a little bit on that timeline again. Um, but I want to also just mention uh, how a degree is earned, it's, uh, we, I feel like we can never mention it too, too early, so I just like people to know. Um, this is how you get a degree from Hope College. You, you have to do all four of these things, and then you'll end up a graduate of Hope. You have to take and fulfill the general education courses, um, an academic major, you have to earn credit for 126 worth of credits, and you need a GPA of 2.0. Uh, if you do three out of those four things, uh, you, you won't be ready to graduate. You need to do all four of those things. I'll come back to that in just a second. Um, our general education requirements, when we say that we mean uh, these are the courses, this is part of the curriculum that our faculty have designed that they want everyone to take part in, learn from, be immersed in. It's the coursework that everyone, regardless of major, does some of. And I'm just going to kind of run through these. Your advisor will talk more about uh, these things with you today and throughout your four years at Hope. Everyone does some of this stuff, a first-year seminar. By the way, our pres President Voskel is um, teaching a first-year seminar, so you could end up in his section, which would be very fun. Everyone does some science and math, some social sciences, which is education, sociology, psychology, political science, communication, those areas. Everyone does some literature, history and philosophy. Everyone does some religion. Everyone does some arts. Everyone does foreign language up through proficiency level two at HOPE. Everyone takes some global learning courses to get uh, diverse perspectives on different topics. Everyone does some health dynamics, which is some nutrition and wellness work. This coursework, you have a, most of these are not specific classes that everyone does. These are class categories where you make choices in. So there's almost always a bunch of choices for you to, to, to make on which classes you do. And depending on your choices, you'll end up doing about 52 to 55-ish credits to fulfill those gen eds. 
Um, for context, here are just some credit totals for some majors, just to give you that context. History major, 36 credits. French majors, 28 credits beyond French 4. So it would be additional credits if you started in French 1. Physics has 27 credits of physics, though quite a number of credits in other sciences. Computer science, 34 credits. Exercise science, 39 credits. Um, minors tend to be between 18 and 22 credits. So I want to, does anyone remember how many credits I said it ne you need to graduate? 126. Who's just decent at math? Who's decent? I need a student. Who, who's a student who's decent at math? All right. What's your name? Oh, we got two over here. Well, you can help each other, okay? You can help each other. All right. So let's say you, with the choices you made, you did 54 credits to finish your gen eds. Okay? Keep that 54 in mind. Then you were a history major. How many credits have you done? 90, yes. So, what, and what is your name? Lillian, Lillian and Beth. Beth. Lillian and Beth. Let's say Lillian and Beth have a 4.0, acing everything. They take all their gen eds, they take all their history, they're superstar students, they want to go to graduate school and become history professors, right? And they go to like graduate and they only have 90 credits, they, it's not going to happen. They need 126. That's actually an accrediting issue. It's not a hope dis decision. You need more credits to graduate. This is good information for you because we require you to do more, right? So uh, for a lot of students, what the more is, it's trying out different things in your first and second year and seeing what, where you connect, where you're thriving, what you're driven to. For others, it might be a second major or a minor. Um, but we build into our curriculum uh, for most majors, you'll end up doing things in addition to your major. Um, there's a few exceptions. Like most majors, you can, you can start a lot of them your junior year and still, still graduate on time. There's a variety of exceptions. Here are some of the exceptions. These are areas where if you're interested in these areas um, and you identify that early on, we'll put you in at least a couple specific classes uh, at the beginning of your education. But in general, you have time. Uh, in your first year or so uh, to try out different things. Um, today, um, talking through today's advising process. So here's what's going to happen uh, uh, when we break. Chris Bull will come up in a little bit and explain like which groups are doing what. But I just want to talk about when you're sitting down and meeting with an advisor um, over in Martha Miller. Um, you're going to have time to sit, talk, and look through the registration materials. If, if you're one of those folks who finds it kind of overwhelming and confusing to just think about it all, uh, your advisor can help kind of walk you through the process and how to think about it. So you'll be sitting down with the advisor and a couple other students, um, de depending on what, which group you're in and, and what you identified as potential areas of major interest. Uh, and then you have a handout where you can record notes, write down questions. You have a practice worksheet. Um, so I would just encourage you, when you have a thought, something you think, oh, I might be interested in that course, jot it down. If you have a question, even if you feel like it's small, or if you think it's like it's something you should already know, jot it down. So make sure you're keeping a record of your own thoughts about that, students. And then third, this is not a requirement at all. Uh, we have a computer lab open over by the advising sessions. And if you want, you can go and submit your registration worksheet while you're here. Um, who should do that? The folks who should do that is anyone who's about 50 or 75% feeling good. Like, all right, I got a list of classes. I think these would be pretty good. I'm not 100% sure about it. That's, you're in a good enough spot to submit that worksheet. Um, if we have questions, we can follow up. If you change your mind, you can log back into the worksheet and actually change it all the way up until June 26. Um, so you'll never feel like you know we'll have it all, all settled. So anytime you're kind of starting to feel comfortable, they have a pretty good grasp on what you might be interested in, that would be a good time to submit it. And again, your advisor will be able to kind of talk you through how that works. And we have advisors in the computer lab um, to help talk you through the online form. Um, I'm just showing this. This is partly for parents, in case you haven't seen this. I've been emailing each week this website to your uh, sons and daughters. Uh, this is our registration website. This is just a screenshot of it. Um, it's got the timeline. It has all these different kind of categories. 
um, that describe the process for registering for classes and all the information. There's no quick and easy way through it. It really, you really have to sit down and take, you if you don't set aside like at least an hour to kind of like slowly browse through it, it will feel overwhelming. But if you take your time, take a day or two, kind of look th through the information, read through it kind of step by step, you will feel a little more comfortable um, with how it all fits together. The other, p you'll see in the upper right hand corner, it says registration worksheet. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Here's a, a screen uh, shot of, of that page once, once you log in. There's two parts, essentially, to this, this worksheet. There is the first part, which is like background information. Are you in a sport? Do you have any ma major areas of interest? Do you have any pre-college credit from AP or IB or, or anything like that? And you'll pop that information in there. And then the, the bulk of it, the, the B section, is the course requests. And this is organized by general education areas. Um, students, you don't need to submit. So I'm gonna, I'm, now I'm going to tell you some things you're going to hear again. And they're also written down in your packet. So you don't need to remember all of these things. But on some of the really important things, we tell you multiple times so that it just sounds familiar the next time you hear it. And this is some of that information. Students, you don't need to list something when you're submitting this in every category. But in general, you want to have more than less. Um, how the whole process of the worksheet works is like this. You're going to look through all these classes, and you're going to submit this. And what you're submitting to us is not like the four classes you want for your schedule. You're going to submit to us um, any areas of study you're interested in, and then like 10 or or more classes that are the ones that you think, yeah, that, maybe I could do that. Um, we don't want you to know how everything has to fit together. We don't want you to know the times of everything because that makes it even more complicated. So how it, the, the big view of how it works is you send us like a menu of options, and then we build you a schedule, and then we send it back to you. And it can still be changed after that. It's not written in stone. So uh, trust the process uh, on that and, and submit a good number of options uh, in, in most of the, the areas. Um, for the FYS section, that is one area where you do have to uh, put requests in, and you're going to list your, your, your top 10 favorites there. Uh, anything else I want to tell you about that now? There is also a uh, place in the course selections where you can tell us what your favorite classes are. So like, if there's something you really, really want, and you don't like my directions of give us more options, the ones you really, really want, you can identify as your top choices. And the other ones you can identify as lesser choices. And that will clue us in. We like to make you happy. So when we can fit you in what you really, really want, we put you in what you really, really want. But sometimes what you really, really want conflicts with what you really, really want, right? <laughs> I don't want any classes at that time of day. Um, but that's the only time of day that class is offered, or you want your two most desired classes happen to meet at the same time. So stuff like that happens, which is why um, we want those kind of variety of options from you. Um, I am going to pass it off in just a second to Chris Bull, who's going to come and give us some directions uh, on what we're doing next. Uh, but before I fully hand it off, you can come on up, Chris. I just want to let you know I, um, f I love this time of year. And I hope that you can love some of today, too. I think this is a time of joy. It's your academic journey's beginning. And um, you only get to do like this, this moment once. And I hope you can enjoy it and have some fun and view it as opportunities as you kind of start to turn the page on this next uh, chapter of your life. So thank you. And I hope you have a great day. And I'll, I'll be around. <laughs>